Okay, so you should have already become somewhat familiar with Adobe Illustrator from the tutorial lessons one and two that you've been working on. Um, but we're going to go through a brief project here that's just going to kind of cover some of the very basics of Illustrator. And then you'll have a little project to do um, just showing that you know how to do these things. So to start out with, we're going to create a new document under File, New. Um, you'll probably have size letter up, which is 8.5 by 11. That's good. That's the size we want. Orientation should be portrait, up and down, units, inches, number of artboards, one. I'm kind of jumping around, but this should probably be what comes up. Hit OK. Um, go to Window, Workspace, make sure Essentials is checked and hit Reset Essentials. I'm going to do that too to make sure our workspaces will look the same here. Um, first we're going to go over the Shape Tool a little bit. Um, the Shape Tool is right here. Right now it's a rectangle. That's the basic one is the Rectangle Tool. If I click the Rectangle Tool, I can click and drag anywhere and make any size shape rectangle I want to make. Tall and thin, wide and thin, Whatever. If I want to make a perfect square, I can hold the shift key while I'm pulling it. That'll make a perfect square. I can also just click and then I can edit the width and height to what I specifically want it. And obviously if they're same, then I'll get a square. All right. There's also a rounded rectangle tool. Kind of the same thing. It'll just have rounded edges. If you click with this one, you can determine what the corner radius will be. The bigger the corner radius, the rounder um, the edges will be. Okay? So then you have the ellipse tool. So if I just click and drag, this makes an ellipse. If I want a perfect circle, I have to hold the shift key. And again, if I click and make the width and the height the same, that will give me a perfect circle. Got the polygonal tool. If I click, I can determine how many sides I want it to have. So if I want it to be, um, uh, let's see, hexagon, right? That's six. Go OK, then I got six sides. Um, if I want a triangle, because you'll notice there's no triangle specifically here, but with the polygonal tool, if I click, I can make it have three sides. That will give me a triangle. OK, and then whatever it's set at is what it's going to make until I click and change that again. So four obviously gives me a square again. All right, I got the star tool. Star tool is kind of fun. You can click and determine how many sides I want it to have, and you can have it have a lot of sides if you want. A way to edit the size of these, go to the selection tool up in the upper left, and then if I hold the shift key, that'll keep it the same, otherwise it'll get distorted. If I want that, that's fine. But So I can make many pointed star if I want to. And then the last thing you have here is the flare tool. This creates kind of a crazy effect, like so. The big kind of camera flare is kind of sitting behind everything right now. So that's kind of a fun thing that you can do too, and you can change the colors of that and stuff. So I'm going to get rid of all these right now, Oops. simply by, with my selection tool, clicking and dragging so that they're all included in that. This selects everything. Hit the backspace. Um, what you're going to want to do for your assignment here is create a shape, just pick one. I'm going to do the star tool. I'm going to decrease the sides. I don't want that many. Maybe do like eight sides. Okay. I'm going to make it bigger. Now to change the color of this, I can go over here. Um, this is the color fill, the fill color. And I can pick any kind of color in my color range here. I like blue a lot, so I'm going to choose kind of a pretty blue. Okay, and then the stroke, that is basically the outline. So if you wanted to have a stroke, you can pick a color. And here you have the stroke weight. You can make it bigger or smaller. If you don't want it to have a stroke at all, there's this little box with a line through it. That means none. Okay, so I'm going to do another shape now within that shape. I'm going to click, I'm going to do a star with uh, six points. And I want to change the color of that. Um, pick a color that's in the same color family, so somewhere in like the blue to green range. Um, but that's either lighter or darker. So I'm going to do a light green. 
that'll be fun. Something that'll kind of stand out in the middle there. Oops, I keep hitting a, a Photoshop um, control when I mean to just go to the selection tool. Okay, so make it bigger, make it fit in there. Um, another thing you can do is you can put a gradient on this, which can be a lot of fun. The gradient tool is over here on your tool panel. <coughs> if we go ahead and select the gradient tool, we can determine a gradient over here. An orange yellow gradient. <coughs> or if I just choose the basic white and black, what I can do is pull this panel out, get my uh, color swatch panel, and I can get similar to that green that I had. And I just clicked and dragged that swatch onto here so it became a color on there. I'm going to put the white, take away the black, and I'm going to change the type to radial. Oh, and I wanted it the other way around, white in the middle. There we go. So, um, you'll go over and you'll learn a lot more about gradients. I know that was really quick, but if you did want to do a gradient, I wanted to show you that that is possible. Oops. Okay, and this controls where the gradient goes from. So I can make it bigger and then I get more white, make it smaller and I get more green. I think I'll leave it just like that. Okay, so now let's say you want to copy this. Um, or you want to move it. If you want to move it, you want to move them both together, you like how they're situated, you can click one, hold the shift key and click the other, and then you can move them together. Um, or you can click and drag like I showed you before, and then I'll select both of them and move them together. The problem is if I move it over here and then deselect, and I try to move it again, they're not attached to one another. If I want them to be, I can get them both selected, right click and go group, now, whether I click off, they're still selected, or I'm going to undo that, okay, so they're not selected, or grouped, and I can go Control G, and that will also group them. All right, now I want to make a copy of this, these two shapes, so I can repeat the pattern somewhere. Um, I could go Control C, Control V, I got another one just like that, um, or I can hold the Alt key, I can select this, hold the Alt key, you see a double arrow come up and just drag it off and then I have a copy and another copy. Okay, I can resize this by selecting it, holding the shift tool, making it smaller or larger. And I can also rotate when you get that bended arrow at the corner, that can rotate it for you. And I'm going to rotate all these a little bit. Alright, so what if we want a background color now? In order to get a background color, we're going to make one big rectangle that covers the whole board. So we're going to get the rectangle tool, make a big rectangle. I'm going to get a color that will contrast with what I have, so kind of like an orangey color. Okay, and then obviously it's covering everything up, so I need to send this rectangle to the back. How I can do that is right click, you'll find arrange, send to back. All right, now it's behind these things. And I'm gonna choose a lighter orange now that I see what that looks like. Okay, that's all right. So I got this sent to the back. Now, if I wanna make sure it's not going anywhere on me, because if I'm trying to move this and I accidentally click the background, it, it could move on me and shift. If it's just my background, I want it to stay there. You can go under Object, Lock, Selection. Now this won't move. The background won't move until I do Unlock All, and then I'll be able to move again. Okay, so we've gotten shapes. Um, you're going to do this. You're going to do a shape within a shape and repeat it at least once, maybe three times, and you could do some different shapes if you want to. And the last thing you need to do is put your name on here. So you're making a name design. Type tool is a big T over here. Go ahead and click. I'm going to put my name. This is Adrian. Now, to, in order to resize this, I can highlight it. I can go through and pick a size 
in the scroll menu. If I know I want it bigger, I can type in my size. Or just like in Photoshop, I can hold Shift Control and the bracket next to the M, make it smaller. The next one will make it larger. Um, also, like as in Photoshop, I can scroll through the fonts by highlighting the font up here when my um, text is highlighted and kind of scrolling through them. And I'm going to pick a font that I like. This one's kind of fun. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to make it a little bigger. Okay, and then I can pick a color. Um, I can go up here and pick a color based on the color swatch. So if I want a dark blue maybe, that's kind of a purple. Or I can click over here and uh, more specifically pick out my color. All right. And there we have it. So um, you're going to do that, like I said, at least do a shape within a shape and um, make the colors kind of related, lighter or darker. Pick a background color and uh, repeat that shape at least once or twice. You can do more shapes than that if you want and make sure you got your name on there in another color also. Try and pick a color scheme that'll all do well together and make a design that's attractive. Go ahead, play around with some of the tools, see what you can come up with. And then you'll hand this in to your hand in folder, um, like usual with your name. So mine would be Adrian, comma, Michelle, um, name design. All right, good luck.